One thing that, that people are often, often say to us is, is how, how can you say that this is coming from the universities? The average person isn't reading Foucault, they're not reading Judith Butler. But the problem is that these ideas, some very specific ideas which centre around the idea that knowledge is not something that exists and is to be found and it can be correct and it's the same for everybody, but it's something that is made. It's constructed by humans uh, with the way they talk about things. And at the moment, white, uh, straight, Western men are considered to be the powerful groups in society who have constructed knowledge artificially with language. So when, because we've got this kind of conception of society, if you don't understand how it works, this just looks mad. But if you, if you can get into the, the framework that they're trying to that they're working to, you can see a kind of internal consistency. It's, it's radically anti-evidence, anti-reason, but there is a consistency in there. So we see this idea that everybody is born and then dependent on their race, gender, sexuality, religion, they're plotted into a certain position on this grid of human beings and they learn to speak in relation to power. So if they're a white man, they will speak with power. If they're a woman of colour, they will speak to power. So we've got this very complicated understanding of going on. And this is where we get the ideas, which probably a lot of you have seen, where we talk about um, punching down and punching up. Has everyone heard these expressions, punching up and punching down? No. No. Nope. So, so th this, is, this is when it's considered to be allowable to... Um, discriminate against people who have less power than you or to criticise them and not allowable to criticise um, the other way around. <laughs> yeah, other not, way around. Right. not allowable to criticise people with um, sort of less power than you. So we see this kind of what sometimes people have called reverse discrimination but it really is just a, a form of, of discrimination. We, we see prejudice against straight white men. We see uh, very hostile attitudes towards knowledge understood to be Western. And we see a very sort of conciliatory and encouraging attitude towards knowledge which is understood to be women's knowledge, people of colour's knowledge, people from the East. So this is where you get the idea of not that there is truth, but that there is your truth and someone else's truth and, you know, the lived experience is primary and objectivity is no longer preference. Yes, I mean, it's really quite extreme. You get... You get claims that science itself and reason are straight white male knowledge, that they are intrinsically oppressive. You get the concept of research justice in which they want to include in, um, in, in research, in knowledge production, they want to include experiences, feelings, uh, religious or cultural traditions, and they want it to be on the same level as truths which have been established provisionally by science. There isn't any need for a reasoned argument. There isn't any need for evidence. And the other um, thing that you've written about and talked about is the loss of the individual. Mm. So can you say just a little bit about that, and then um, we'll talk more about idea laundering. Yeah, when this, um, this... This has been going on for about 30 years now. So when these disciplines started coming up, so intersectional feminism, post-colonial theory, critical race theory, queer theory, the first thing that they attacked was what was known as liberalism. Now, that's on the broadest sense. It doesn't mean left-wing, as often um, people assume in the US. It just means that sort of broad um, aim for equality and freedom for everybody. So they argued against this. They argued against the idea that we should see everybody as an individual, regardless of their race, gender, or sexuality, and we should make sure that every individual has the same access to everything that our shared society has to offer. Now, this requires, requires a commitment to understanding people as individuals and understanding us all as humans. There's a universality there. There's a humanism there. So these, these schools of thought, they, they immediately attacked this. They said this was essentially a myth, that the individual is really just um, straight white men putting their values onto everybody else and saying, this is how you should be. So they wanted to look at people instead as demographic groups. And they tied knowledge into this. So there's women's knowledge and there's people of colour's knowledge and there's trans people's knowledge. And these have been unfairly 
um, denigrated and, and disparaged. So now we need to elevate those. And so these concepts uh, about um, having different rules for different identities <coughs> and um, uh, you know that, that uh, being a person of uh, some marginalization allows one to be a victim of racism, but if you are in the dominant class, you, you can't be a victim of racism. Yeah. Um, the idea that, that uh, words are harmful, that words are violent. This is the stuff that has gotten into all kinds of areas um, outside of the academy and within. That's the idea laundering. So can you talk?